Okay guys, this is a um, session on well-being science and some of the implications of this type of research. So the very first thing I want to cover is something called motivational, in motivational interviewing. Now I've covered a bit of CBT and ACT in the previous session. This particular session I'm just going to list down the key principles of motivational and motivational interviewing techniques. So the very first principle is to express empathy uh, th through reflective listening. Uh, the second one is to develop uh, discrepancy between clients' goals uh, or values and their current behaviour. So that basically means getting the um, client to uh, understand um, that they're not actually working towards their goals or values. There's a discrepancy between their what they're actually doing um, and what they would like to be doing in terms of what's important or meaningful to them. So that could be health related um, values, it could be family related values, it could be friend related values, whatever is important to that particular person, uh, they're not working towards those particular values and therefore there's a discrepancy. Um, the third principle is to avoid argument and direct confrontation. So in this particular approach, um, you want to show empathic concern, uh, you want to reflectively listen, and you certainly do not want to confront the clients. Um, the fourth aspect is to adjust to uh, client resistance rather than opposing it uh, directly. So each client will have different levels of um, resistance. Some will be very, very resistant, some will be less resistant. Um, as a ther therapist, what you're supposed to do with this particular therapy uh, or this particular type of interviewing is to not directly oppose their resistance to work with the client um, and try to get them to adopt more of that, uh, goal and value consistent behavior and move them away from that discrepancy um, the last point is to support self-efficacy and optimism. So you're encouraging more optimistic um, outlooks of life. You're trying to support self-efficacy. That's their confidence. That's how they, they believe they control their environment, their outcomes. So it's important to um, make the client feel that they're in control, that they've got an optimistic uh, future. And um, what they need to do is kind of work towards your their goals and their values and overcome those barriers that are stopping them from achieving those goals or values. So that's what motivational interviewing is in um, in a very uh, short nutshell. Um, I kind of wanted to cover some aspects of uh, definitions of well-being. Um, the Oxford English Dictionary defines well-being as a state of being comfortable, healthy and happy. So uh, previous uh, definitions of um, health are usually the um, absence of disease. Um, the, the Oxford English Dictionary defines health as a state of being free from illness or injury. That's in stark contrast to the definition of well-being, which is more the kind of um, positive emotions such as uh, um, being content and um, happy and so forth. Um, the World Health Organization definition um, defines health as a complete mental, physical and social well-being. So according to this particular definition, um, it's not just the absence of d disease. The World Health Organization has recognized that health um, includes well-being um, and not just um, the reduction of, of illness. So this is social well-being, physical, mental well-being. Um, but these definitions have been criticised. Now, from a positive psychology perspective, and I'll probably spend more time going through positive psychology at a later date in more detail, um, but um, for this particular session, I can just give you a very quick overview and um, po uh, positive psychologists uh, have approached the construct of well-being from a different 
perspective um, looking at things like life satisfaction psychological well-being flourishing so Seligman um, he's a he's one of the big developers of this particular um, theory um, this particular practice um, and it's 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 not it's not focusing on the reduction of depression anxiety and those kind of things like C, what CBT does um, or the acceptance of um, of thoughts you dislike like actors um, positive psychology is more about the emphasis of um, the positive aspects of uh, flourishing life satisfaction well-being and so forth resilience is another important concept um, and this is your, your your ability to adapt to adversity tragedy the bouncing back from difficult experiences very very important aspect one of the big models um, in positive psychology something called uh, the perma model this is the seligman's model uh, this um, incorporates um, uh, both uh, hedonic and eudaimonic theory um, the perma model argues for a five pronged uh, model of well-being including positive emotions engagement positive relations meaning and accomplishment so there's overlap there obviously with act and other value-based inter um, interventions uh, including motivational interviewing because there is some values in there what's important to you the sense of accomplishment completing goals and working towards your values uh, you'll find those in in many types of uh, therapeutic approaches um, the difference here is the focusing of the, on the positive emotions um, and uh, positive relations. So this is very, very heavy about the positive aspects of the psyche. Um, so there are criticisms of um, various psychological well-being um, definitions and theories. Um, so the main kind of criticism is that they tend to ignore the wider system systematic issues such as loneliness inequality environmental degradation and climate change so these are more kind of like the the world in, in which we live so you can perhaps take it from um, a sociological perspective uh, and broaden it out from a, a purely psychological perspective in which the the world in which the the person lives and their connection with their environment the connection with the community so um should i mean that's a big question in psychology should, should psychologists be you know interested in these more global um frameworks so should we just be f focusing on just the reduction of depression the reduction of anxiety or should we be looking beyond that and looking at inequality environmental degradation climate change loneliness you know these these can be challenged by greater community bonding and greater um collaboration efforts and i'm going to do a lot more um uh, uh sessions in terms of uh, explaining the various um theories including a, an act-based theory um, around this I'll explore game theory I'll explore I'll explore several different types of uh, theories which which kind of look at this community building that I'll, which I'm really really interested in so I would say yes we should be looking at how psychology fits into the broader community and lots of uh, well-being scientists agree with that perspective um, so um, we are basically looking at um, how, for instance, uh, how we can develop things like sustainable happiness, sustainable well-being, um, and um, develop that kind of conversation in terms of environmental psychology, which explicitly links psychological science to some of these challenges. So there's an entire branch there called environmental uh, psychology that uh, tries to link these things in with broader well-being science um, this is a particular framework uh, the genial uh, framework um, by uh, colleagues of mine Andrew Kemp uh, et al and um, this 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 particular uh, theory has been designed um, because of some of the the issues around um, previous models, 
not not exploring um, the connection between the individual and community. So this is a much more kind of universal theory in my perspective. So the uh, Geneal uh, model uh, or framework provides a theoretical context in which we understand key components which determine pathways to health and well-being for individuals, for example, psychological experiences, health behaviours, vagal functions, that's things like heart rate variability components. Um, so um, this is a new model. Um, and again, it was motivated because of the tired debates between proponents of individualist versus structural approaches to um, health promotion. So the individualists are about you know, what you can do for that particular individual, reduce their depression, reduce their um, uh, anxiety, versus the structural approach guys who talk more about community and connections and those kind of things. Um, the, they often ignore the need for com uh, the combination of these. So the Geneal model is uh, looking at a combination of these, uh, and that's, that's why it was basically uh, produced. Um, so it emphasizes a role for the individual, community and wider environment. So this particular model might be useful for building those community connections um, or at least ex showing, explaining a framework of how those connections can develop uh, and lead on to, you know, um, dealing with some of the big questions that the environmental psychologists are talking about, such as you know, uh, climate change and those big global challenges that we have to kind of work towards as a as a collaborative. Um, so the Geneal model um, in its most recent iteration characterizes socio structural influences over the individual health related behaviors and some subsequent development emphasizing uh, emphasizing an important role for community cohesion and collective efficacy to support individual health related goals. So it's about looking at things like how social ties can influence human health. It's about looking at the broader, wider community and environmental uh, uh, considerations and how these things are connected. Wellbeing science might um, um, provide a framework for for positive action and change um, in the future. Um, this is the kind of uh, very basic um, Venn diagram, kind of illustration, uh, illustrating how there is a symbiont relation between community, individual, and environment. Um, and, you know, if we have a framework for connecting individuals in terms of an, a community with common goals, uh, these can have a, a greater and broader environmental connection um, and and positive effect towards um, the environment, such as um, climate change and those kind of things, and better better collaborative communities. So, uh, just as a final slide, and again, guys, I'll, I'll do more sessions on this. I'll cover this in a lot more detail. I just want to have a um, like an introductory session in terms of what these. Uh, key components relate to, um, but the broader conceptions is how, you know, how all of this stuff links in with the psychological environmentalism, the sociology, the economic theory, and political theory. So there's a lot of um, broader uh, conceptual um, boundaries that we can probably link this 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 stuff into. Okay, guys, that's all I've got to say for now. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. And again, I'll go into those key concepts in a lot more detail in the future. Thank you very much.